Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Republican lawmakers are continuing their attack on schools for teaching students about the true history of the United States, from the genocide of Native Americans to the legacy of slavery. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell recently criticized the Department of Education for promoting what he described as revisionist history, including the New York Times 1619 Project, which reexamined the pivotal role slavery played in the founding of the United States. In his letter, Mitch McConnell wrote, quote, Americans never decided our children should be taught that our country is inherently evil, unquote. Well, today we begin our show looking at an epic new television series that delves deeply into a history Mitch McConnell would prefer not be taught, the legacy of European colonialism from the Americas to Africa. This is a trailer for Exterminate All the Brutes, the new series directed by the Haitian-born filmmaker Raoul Peck. There is something we need to talk about. Three words that summarize the whole history of humanity. Civilization, colonization, extermination. This is the origin of the ideology of white supremacy. This is me in the middle, and I just want to understand why do I bring myself into this story? Because I am an immigrant from a whole country. Neutrality is not an option. It's time to own up to a basic truth a story of survival and violence. We know now what their task truly is. Exterminate all the brutes. That's the trailer for the epic HBO documentary series Exterminate All the Brutes, which is available on HBO and HBO Max. Time magazine said the series, quote, may well be the most politically radical and intellectually challenging work of nonfiction ever made for television. Well, Democracy Now!'s Nirmeen Sheikh and I recently interviewed Raoul Peck, the Haitian filmmaker who directed Exterminate All the Brutes. He joined us from Paris, France. His past films include I Am Not Your Negro, about James Baldwin, Lumumba, about the Congolese prime minister Patrice Lumumba, and the young Karl Marx. I asked Raoul Peck to talk about how he went from making a film about James Baldwin to creating Exterminate All the Brutes. Basically, uh, after I Am Not Your Negro, uh, you know, I went throughout the world with the film. Uh, I was fortunate to, to be able to see how the film was received in many different places. And one of the common thread through that was the type of reaction that we, you just mentioned, like uh, Senate leader uh, uh, Mitch McConnell. Uh, you know, this denial is somehow a sign that they feel that they are entrenched now. They are attacked. Uh, there is great fear about some sort of civilization going overboard. And, and it's for me, it's a, 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 you know, it's a symbol that um, the type of lies, the type of propaganda, the type of abuse uh, uh, that we have been subject to for during all these years. I'm old enough to have heard many other people like Nick Santorum, uh, Mitch McConnell, and many others throughout the years. Uh, the only difference now is that we have the means to counter them. We have the means to tell the real story. And that's exactly what I decided to do, uh, to once for all put everything on the table uh, without any semblance of, of, you know, holding back my punches. It was, you know, everything is on the table. I've been on the table for a long time, uh, except that it, it was in, in little bits everywhere. And uh, because, you know, science, sociology, anthropology, etc., politics have been cut up in little pieces. So we lost the wider perspective. And the film does exactly that, to bring us to the core story, to have the whole matrix of the last 700 years of basically Eurocentric ideology and narrative. Well, Raoul Peck, in providing this broader uh, historical context, 
you trace the origins of contemporary modern forms of biological racism to the Spanish Inquisition and the so-called purity of blood statutes, that is, limpieza de sangre, that was a means exactly. of distinguishing old Christians from conversos, that is, Jews, but also Moors, from the pure blood of Christians. These laws, you say, are the antecedents of the ideology of white supremacy. For the first time in the world, the idea of race based on blood was enshrined into law. So how should we understand the continuities between the purity of blood statutes and the forms of racist violence we witness today? Because the entire argument of this truly magnificent work is that the past is not really past. It is, as you say, the past has a future that we can't anticipate. Well, it, it, the, the thing is that we are accustomed to not see history uh, as a continuity, as you say. Uh, and we came from a, a very specific uh, uh, history. And uh, we are not, you know, uh, uh, some sort of a tribalist, uh, you know, tribe where that came up nowhere. Uh, today, civilization is basically embedded in the capitalistic uh, societies. Uh, and, and that story started around the 10th and 11th century with the first accumulation of riches accompanied by uh, killing uh, and exiling of Jews, killing Muslims, uh, trying to go all the way to Jerusalem. And that, those first crusades were uh, able to, uh, you know, create a lot of, uh, or not create, to, to basically extract uh, a lot of riches that allows the, the monarchy to be able to finance trips uh, to discovery new roads to the East. And, and, and the accident, which it was of the so-called discovery, of the new continent uh, was not something they planned, but uh, it, it, and when it happened, they basically created a totally new concept, which is the concept of discovery. And from that day on, you know, you could just go somewhere, put a flag, uh, deploy military uh, uh, flanks and say, this is mine, no matter who was on that land before. Uh, and, and I remind you that uh, at the time of Columbus, there were basically a hundred million uh, uh, people on both continents uh, uh, in, uh, in America. So uh, you can imagine what it meant within a hundred years, more, more than 90% of them were uh, totally uh, uh, annihilated. So uh, it's, it's a very specific moment in the history of the modern world. Uh, um, for the U.S., it seems like it's the beginning of a new world, but it's not. It's a continuity of uh, a lot of action that have been, uh, uh, you know, the source of European civilization, basically. To a clip from Exterminate All the Brutes, where you explain settler colonialism. From the beginning, the extension of the United States from sea to shining sea was the intention and design of the country's founders. Free land was a magnet that attracted European settlers. This particular form of colonialism is called settler colonialism. But as a system, it requires violence. It requires the elimination of the natives and their replacement by European settlers. And this is another clip from your series, Exterminate All the Brutes. In this dramatized scene, a white man, played by the actor Josh Hartnett, engages in a standoff with a Native American woman leader. I did not want to spill Seminole blood, kill Seminole children, Seminole women. Give us back the American property you stole from our good fellow men, planters and settlers and I let you move to the Indian territory the U.S. government has provided for your people. You call human beings your property? They're slaves. You steal land. You steal life. You steal humans. What kind of species are you? 
So we were listening to Abby Asiola, or the woman who plays her, of the Seminole Nation. You say her story goes deep into the history of this continent. Talk about who she is and why you choose to center her and the Seminole Nation in the first part of your series, um, including their solidarity with enslaved Africans. Well. The, the whole vision of the film is based in changing totally the point of view of who is telling the story. And in particular, because this story not only center from Europe, but also center in, in the bottom or in the middle of the United States uh, uh, of America, I had to start the film from that particular point of view of this, uh, of this woman who is the head of her tribe, of her nation. And basically, you know, the Seminole have been one of the rare tribes who were never really, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, who did not really obey uh, to the uh, enforcement uh, of leaving their territories. And they, they were called the invisible tribe for, for a reason. So it was important for me to start it from a point of resistance, from a point of, of an individual, of a woman, uh, and watching this invader basically telling her uh, to, to leave her land and to deliver the slaves that were, in, of course, you know, that's a story that is not really well known, that uh, a lot of slaves who escaped were uh, welcomed uh, by Seminoles and other tribes. Uh, and 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 I wanted to start with those that symbolic moment of resistance and also of solidarity, uh, and and from there deploy the whole rest of the story. Well, uh, Raul, uh, that is in one of the uh, forms of continuity that you point to. Uh, the story of Native Americans uh, is absolutely critical. And the erasure of this genocidal history, in particular in the United States, is evidenced, as you show, in the perverse use of Native American names and designations for military weapons, uh, from Black Hawk to Apache, as well as military operations, the most uh, recent and proximate of which uh, was the May 2011 operation named Geronimo. Uh, to assassinate Osama bin Laden. So could you talk a little bit more about that, the way in which Native American history has been distorted, if not entirely erased, and the uses to which it's been put uh, in uh, contemporary, uh, in contemporary uh, U.S. Uh, politics? Well, it, it's, it's clear uh, that, uh, and you see that throughout the film, through different type of device or, or, or type of, of stories, uh, level of stories in the film, is how everything is somehow connected. You know, the history of the Native American, uh, which is for me the core story, uh, whether it has been pushed out and, and, and uh, er erased uh, sometimes or talk, uh, told the, the wrong way, uh, it's like a phantom. It's already there. You can't get rid of it, you know. Uh, there are so many skeletons in, in, in those uh, boxes that, you know, they, they come up and they are more and more coming out. And, and, uh, and it's ironic that the very powerful U.S. Army, who was basically uh, at its core created uh, not only to fight the British at the beginning, but after independent, it was basically used uh, to, to kill Indians and to keep uh, slaves, uh, black slaves uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, um, in, on the plantations. So the, basically the, the U.S. Army at the beginning was the militia, you know. So uh, this story continue, you know, it's basically a, a story of 200 years, which is in, in the whole history of, of humankind is nothing. So um, as, as long as uh, you, you can try to repress that story, but it's, it's coming out there, you know, as long as there will be Native American or there will be blacks uh, alive, they will continue to tell that story.
There is no escape from it. Uh, and that's why what I was saying at the beginning, uh, you know, when you see people like Rick Santorum saying that, well, when we came, there was nobody on this land. Where did, what did you do with the 100 million people? You have to explain that. Uh, so it, it's really, uh, it, it becomes more and more absurd that uh, uh, Republican leadership at that level are capable of such ignorance. You know, it's mind breeding. You know, so it, it's for me, it's just the logic of the whole story. And that's what we try uh, to to explain and to tell in this story uh, of exterminate all the brute. And, and I really my, my objective is really to make sure that that kind of ignorance cannot be voiced anymore. Raoul, another uh, possible uh, uh, form of repression, another idea that has been repressed is something that Sven Linquist in his uh, extraordinary book, Exterminate All the Brutes, from which your film uh, substantially draws. He shows how closely intertwined the idea of progress is with racism and even genocide. What alternatives uh, uh, do you see uh, to this ideology and uh, where do you see it, if at all, taking shape? Uh, well, it, it's a very complicated question to answer. And, and I don't really go by uh, that way in, in assessing what the future will be or what are the solution. Uh, I think any solution will first have to start with the real story. You know, we need to sit down around the same table and, and uh, you know, agree on the diagnostic. We have to agree on the genocide. We have to agree in the whole line of history that's been going on for more than 700 years. Otherwise, there is no conversation possible. Uh, so I am not, and we are not, uh, if I can speak for many others, it's not about, you know, revenge. It's not about, you know, it's about, you know, let's see the world as it is and let's name, you know, all the things that happened and, and had bring us to what the world is today. You know, that's what it is about. It's not about, you know, uh, you know, your show, showing how culprit you are or not. It's about acknowledging the past and the present because they are strongly connected. We're talking to Raoul Peck, the acclaimed Haitian-born filmmaker who then grew up in the Democratic Republic of Congo, as well as the United States. He is the director of the new HBO four-part documentary series, Exterminate All the Brutes. We continue our conversation after break. This is Democracy Now!, <clears throat> democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. If you want to get our daily email digests of news, headlines, stories and alerts, go to send the word Democracy Now!, one word without a space, to 66866. Text the word Democracy Now!, one word without a space, to 66866. We are continuing now with our conversation with Raoul Peck, the Haitian-born director of the new HBO four-part documentary series, Exterminate All the Brutes. I want to go to another clip from the second episode in the series, where Raoul Peck, he is the narrator of this series, explains what happened after Columbus arrived in what is now Haiti, where Raoul Peck was born. Instead of the bustling ports of the East Indies, Columbus came upon a tropical paradise populated by the Taino people, what is now Haiti. Then, from the Iberian Peninsula, came merchants, mercenaries, criminals, and peasants. They seized the land and property of indigenous peoples and declared the territories to be extensions of the Spanish and Portuguese states. These acts were confirmed by the monarchies and endorsed by the papal authority of the Roman Catholic Church. That's more or less the official story. And through that official story, a new vision of the world was created. The doctrine of discovery. 
That's a clip from Exterminate All the Brutes, the 18th century, known as the Age of Revolutions. But we often associate this time with the American Revolution or the French Revolution, not the Haitian Revolution, which was led by black slaves, the first country in the Western Hemisphere to be born of a slave uprising. You say, Raoul Peck, the only revolution that materialized the idea of enlightenment, freedom, fraternity and equality for all. You know, Haiti becomes a republic and the U.S. Congress would not recognize it for decades, fearful that the fact that Haiti was born of a slave uprising would inspire the enslaved people of the United States to rise up as well. Can you talk about the erasure of the Haitian Revolution, um, your own um, uh, country, Haiti, its significance for you, and how the U.S. dealt with Haiti all of these years? Well, uh, you know, the, the, the best uh, um, uh, words for this is what Michel Rolf Trouillot have written about silencing the past. It was key for the U.S. and all the other European powers to silence the Haitian Revolution, uh, because it was, in their eyes, worse than Cuba in the 50s. You know, we were under a strict embargo, because all of them had economy that still relied on slavery. Uh, and Haiti was the worst example they could have. And Haiti was also beating them in terms of their ide own ideology of enlightenment. Uh, because Haiti, the first constitution of Haiti, basically stated that any man or woman or person who set, set foot on the island is a free person, you know, and none of the others' revolution uh, dared go so far because they were totally uh, uh, in, involved in slavery and were profiting from it. So there was no way that the Haitian Revolution could be accepted. So when people say that uh, America is the first democratic country uh, uh, in the uh, Western Hemisphere, uh, it's not. It's Haiti. So uh, and the, the the story continue until today. You know, we have a history of being uh, attacked, of being invaded, uh, uh, of many of our leaders uh, um, come to power with the acceptance of the U.S. Uh, government. Uh, and it continue until today. You know, the, the basically the the last two presidents we had came on, uh, into uh, into power thanks to the support of the U.S. Uh, government. So we have unfortunately a long story of of uh, uh, abuse from uh, um, the United States and also of resistance. Because one thing that we can say is that the Haitian people were always. Uh, whether it take you know 30 years, five years or two years, they always make sure that they can get rid of those corrupt leaders. I want to ask about one of the critical issues, Raul, that you raise in the last uh, uh, part of the film, a critical question. You talk about your own experience living in Berlin, where you lived for 15 years and were also a film student where you made a film on a, a Nazi torture compound. You say when you were there that you thought a lot about how a country that's produced some of humanity's best philosophers, scientists and artists also operated one of the most devastating scientifically run and engineered killing machines. Now, many people have reflected on this question and the seeming contradiction uh, in this fact by concluding that the Holocaust was some kind of historical aberration. In other words, that it stands very much outside the history of the Enlightenment and the ideas of humanism and universalism on which it apparently stands. But your film seems to suggest, even as this is raised as a question, your film suggests that other conclusions could be drawn. Could you talk a little bit about that? Well, it's, it's nothing new. Uh, in fact, there are many scholars that have uh, worked uh, on that specific question for the last 50, 60 years. Uh, and, and of course, there is resistance to say that the Holocaust was a very uh, special moment in the life of Western civilization. But it's not. It's a continuity 
of of a uh, uh, um, uh, 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 will of of genocide, a will of uh, eliminate uh, people that are deemed inferior. Uh, the the structure of genocide are always the same. You know, the the, the person uh, uh, who invented the word genocide. Uh, you know, Ralph Raphael Lemkin uh, in 1943. Uh, you know, we, we went to the New York Public Library, and in that library, in his file, there is a list of something around 42 uh, uh, previous genocide before the Holocaust. And he included in it, of course, the genocide uh, against the Native American people. So, uh, you know, trying to make any type of genocide a special, I think, is a, is a really... Uh, uh, not correct way of seeing the history of humankind. Uh, they all copied from each other. They are all, of course, uh, specific. You know, you can't directly, uh, um, you know, compare the genocide in Rwanda uh, with the genocide in Cambodia and uh, with the Holocaust. You know, they have different, uh, 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 you know, uh, ideological uh, 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 reason. They have different historical. Uh, reason they have different people involved, but as a structure, as a system of genocide, they all obey the same pattern uh, of first, you know, pinning down a special category of person, of people, and then start uh, saying that we are superior to them, and they are insect. They are the and as as soon as you come to the point where where they are animals, or they are savages, or they are insects, you are allowed to kill them. And that's the excuse that was always needed for every imperialist, for every conqueror, uh, in order to eliminate whoever was in the land they wanted to conquer. Uh, so it, it's similar. It has been similar throughout the history of humankind. Uh, and it became more specific within the concept of the capitalistic society, because then it was also linked to, to profit. It was also linked to, to uh, uh, make bigger territories in order to exploit uh, 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 large communities. So um, I have had that discussion many years ago, back ago, including in Germany. But uh, today, I think uh, we should move uh, past that, uh, you know, that uh, what I, I would call the the, the confrontation between, you know, who got the, the, the biggest pain, you know, uh, do we put slavery confronted to the Holocaust or the Wendy's uh, pain? You know, it's not about that. We are all from the same human family. It's not about, you know, who has suffered the more. I think we have to acknowledge every piece of history that happened on this planet. And we have to give responses to them. And we have to explain why they happened. And because it's the only way that eventually we can prevent them to happen again and again. And we want to talk more about that um, after this last clip from the series, Exterminate All the Brutes. Trading human beings. What sick mind thought of this first? Brought by force and pushed to death. Slavery or the trade as they refer to it euphemistically. A state-sponsored genocide. What does this say about a civilized world? So, if you could talk more about what this does say, and going back to the beginning, talking about um, genocide, uh, the term coined by Raphael Lemkin, um, colonization, um, as well as civilization, and how you see find hope today in the discussions, if this is all acknowledged, though you're saying just acknowledging this is not enough. Yes, uh, uh, of course, but uh, acknowledging it, it's a big step. Uh, and that's what I wanted to say uh, uh, before, is that, uh, you know, for, for even for me as a filmmaker, uh, telling that story, it, it took a lot of uh, uh, thinking to, in order to, to tell a story where, for the first time, you tell the story of the genocide of Native Americans. 
and then you tell the story of slavery, uh, and then you tell also the the one of the major uh, 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 extermination story, uh, which is the Holocaust. You know, and and for the first time, I think uh, at least on on film, you see you can see the connections between them. And for me, it's a it's a huge step. You know, it's it's taking all those atrocity in a different context. And and for me, it's it can only be the beginning of a wider conversation, you know, instead of, of you know, each part keeping their own uh, malheur, they're keeping their own death, their own uh, uh, pain, uh, and sometimes being used uh, against each other, you know. Uh, and that's uh, a device that has been used for many, many years. And, and for me, the film is also uh, a step to break that uh, uh, separate narrative. There is not many different stories. There is one uh, historical knowledge, and we need to access it. And uh, and to your question, uh, uh, and that's the light motive in the series. You know, we already know enough. You know, uh, the problem is what do we do with that knowledge? You know, and and because everything I say in the film, everything that uh, Sven Linquist tells the story about, or Michel Rolf Trouillot, or Roxanne Domba Ortiz, those are fact. Uh, those are highly uh, uh, competent uh, scholars who spend their life documenting the horror. And, and, uh, and my use of their work with them was exactly that, uh, to force the conversation to a more sovereign type of discussion and, and to, to push aside uh, the, the blurring of, of history, push aside the, the ignorance that still, you know, uh, uh, reign in, in the discussion. And, uh, you know, we, I'm not going to name them again, the, the two politicians I named, but uh, I think a population are more and more interested in learning uh, where they come from, you know. And there is a reason why everybody now wants to have their DNA, DNA analyzed. Because there, there is some sort of, of feeling of connection, you know, uh, uh, and and it's it's our job as filmmakers and you as journalists as well to 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 lay that in in plain sight, and then we can say, okay, what what do we do with this, you know? That's exactly. We just have a minute. What do we do with this? Your film begins and ends with the same line that Sven Lindquist says again and again. It's not knowledge that we lack. What is missing is the courage to understand what we know and draw the conclusions. How does your film and the work of these other authors enable that courage? Uh, you know, I was uh, uh, primarily uh, educated by Jesuits. <laughs> and, uh, and one thing is maybe from that, that I believe in the notion of knowledge. I believe in the notion of learning the truth. And, and the film for me is the first step. And, and my, my wish is that uh, every school, every university is able to watch the film and have discussion around it. Uh, because that's that's you cannot go further if you don't know your own history, wh whether whatever the side you are on. But you need to know, and it's not about accusing you of anything. It's about facing your reality, because you you can't understand what's going on. You can't understand why policemen are still killing black kids and black men and black women uh, in this country uh, if you don't know where it comes from. You know, and 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 it's unfortunate. Uh, as uh, you know, we are in a uh, in a time where uh, we have huge uh, uh, instruments for communication, uh, a huge instrument to to learn for learning. You can go on the internet and learn about everything, but we lack a very uh, condensed matrix of those histories that are you know we have been uh, uh, built by. You know, and, and each one of us need to do our homework. Otherwise, I don't see any uh, nonviolent outcome 
out of this. Raul Peck, the acclaimed Haitian-born filmmaker, director of the new HBO four-part documentary series, Exterminate All the Brutes. Visit democracynow.org to watch our 2018 interview with Raul about his films The Young Marx and I Am Not Your Negro, about James Baldwin. When we come back, The Man Who Lived Underground. We go to Portugal to speak with Julia Wright about how she unearthed an unpublished novel about racist police violence, written by her father, the legendary African-American writer Richard Wright, who wrote Native Son and Black Boy. Stay with us.